Hello everyone! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to randomly spawn objects in Unity. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you after the intro. Ok so now we're inside of the Unity editor and let's get started. So first of all I want to set up the scene. So let's go to the hierarchy, right click and create a new 3D object and I'm going to create a cube and I'm going to set its position to 0, 0, 0 and I'm also going to set the Y position to negative 0 0.5. I do this so that the top part of the cube is aligned with the 0 plane right here, okay? So now I'm going to increase its scale, so on the X axis I want it to be, let's say 20, so 20 by 20 and I'm going to leave the Y at 1. And now I switch into the top perspective, so click on this little green Y arrow right here and then click on the cube in the middle uh, to go to um, autographic mode, uh, I mean isometric view and for some reason okay so now the next thing i want to add is i want to add our spawn object so we're going to create empties so the first empty we're going to create is going to be our original spawner and we're going to call it spawner and then we're going to give it an icon so that we can see it i'm going to take the yellow one right here and then I'm going to set its Y position to 0 0.5 because I'm going to spawn in a cube so the cube is aligned with the uh, with the floor that we just created and I'm and then I'm going to place the spawner uh, in a position that I want and I'm also going to make a prefab out of it so let's just drag it into the assets folder and here we have our prefab and now the next thing I want to do is I want to tag um, this spawner. So click on add tag and we're going to click on this little plus icon. And the tag is going to be spawner. Okay. So now tag the spawner as spawner. This is very important so make sure that you have this. And now I'm just going to uh, copy the spawn a couple of times and position it at, a, at a, a different location. Okay, and now let me save the scene. So I'm going to create a new folder first and call it scenes. Then I go into the scenes folder and I'm going to create a scene underscore main and save it. And now what I want to do is one last thing is I want to right click and create another empty and put it at zero 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 and call it game manager manager um, this object is important because it will handle all the spawning in our game and now the last thing I do is I'm going to go to the characters folder I just imported the first person character assets uh, from Unity, so you can use your own or you can import one as well. Um, also don't forget to uh, click on the cube in the middle again to change back to perspective mode because otherwise um, your whole scene will look strange. And I'm going to drag in the first person controller. And now I'm going to test the scene, so as you can see I can walk around. And yeah, so nothing happens really. Okay. So let me perhaps position it at zero, 0, So now let's go ahead and write a script. So right click and create a new C-sharp script. And I'm going to call this one random spawner. And then I'm going to open it up. And Visual Studio will take a second to open up the uh, script. Okay, so now it opened up. And let's go ahead and write the script. So first of all, we don't need a void update in this case because I only want to spawn an object one time. 
So I just go ahead and delete it and then put the bracket down here. And now the first thing we need is a reference to all our spawners. So reference to all spawner objects. Okay. So what we're going to need is we're going to need a public game object. And now this is important, we're going to put uh, those angled brackets right there. And that means that this variable is going to be an array. And an array is um, something like a, co a container for variables. We'll show you what it is in just a second. And I'm going to call this variable or this array spawn points. Okay, so now if I go back to Unity and apply the random spawner script to our game manager and have a look at our game manager you can see that we have um, this thing here now we can type in a size so we have four spawners and we can type it in and now we can drag in all the spawners and we have a reference to each uh, to each spawner and if for example we have a spawner more or a spawner less we can adjust it so let's say we are going to set the size to five and as you can see we have five elements. Now another thing to um, realize is that a computer counts from zero to four in this case, even though we have set the size to five. So the computer counts zero, one, two, three, four. And this is very important for the next part of the code. So let's go to the script. And we're also going to need a reference to the object we want to spawn later on. So let's quickly do that. So reference to the object we want to, to spawn. And in this case, it's just going to be a public game object. And I'm going to call it game object to spawn to keep it general. Okay. And now in the void start, I first want to si assign the spawn point. So assign or a better way to put it is find all the spawn points in the scene. Because this is exactly what the script is going to do. Uh, I mean the part of the script. So to do that, we are going to write spawn points is equal to game object because want to find the game object right and then uh, point find game objects with tags so in this case it's very important that you have the one selected with game up uh, with the s so plural because you want to find multiple objects because again this is an array and it has a reference to multiple objects and now we make an open and close bracket and as you can see, it says it wants a string and the string is going to be the tag. And we already set up this tag, so we are going to write spawner and then semicolon to finish off this line. Okay, so now we assign every spawn, so we find every spawn point in the scene and we are assigning it to the spawn points. So now if we go back to our scene and have a look at it and let Unity compile for a second and I'm going to set this to zero because Unity is going to adjust it on its own. So let's play and as you can see the size was automatically set to four and Unity put in all of the spawners. So yeah, so this is working. So let's go back and continue. So the, now the next thing is we want to actually find a random, we want to decide which of the spawn points we are going to use. And to do that, we are going to write a new method and this method is going to be of type game object and then select random spawner. Okay. So now we got that one. So, this might look a little bit um, new to you 
because normally if you see a method it has the type void which means no return type but in this case we want to find in this part of the code we want to find a game uh, to find or actually want to select one of our spawners randomly so this is going to select one of our spawners randomly and this is also going to return the selected spawner so what it means is instead of using a variable we can type in or actually just let's first write out this lines of uh, the, uh, the lines of code which go in here and then you will see what it actually does so the first thing we uh, need to do is we are going to need a local variable and it's going to be of type object and we're going to call it selected spawner okay and then we're going to set the selected spawner to spawn points and now inside of the brackets right here we can define our index so what the index is it's basically which in which position of the array is the object we want to use so this kind of sounds complicated right now but if we have a look at our spawn points and then let's put it free you can see it has element 0 1 and 2 and now if we would put in for example um, spawn points 2 uh, not like this, but instead like this. So if we would do that, then what would happen is it would grab the second element, which is in this case element one, and use the game object, which is inside of uh, this slot right here, okay? And if there was an element uh, three, for example, then it was, uh, if, uh, if the number would be three inside of here, then element 2 would be used, okay? So what we're going to do inside of here is basically we are going to make a random number. So we are going to write random dot range. And this random number is going to range from 0 to spawn points dot length. And spawn points dot length is the length of the array. So if there are four spawn points in the whole scene, then the length of the array is going to be four. And if it's, I don't know, 100 spawn points, then you have a, a length of 100. Okay, so now finish off this uh, line of code with a semicolon. Oh, the last thing we need to do is we are going to return the selected spawner. And this is a key line, so you can't uh, leave that out. Uh, leave that out, because if you do, you can see that we got uh, we get an error right here, because methods which have a return type that means that they are not of type void, but instead of some other type, this could also be an integer or a float or something like this. In this case, it's a game object. We need. To return the uh, we need to return an game object and in this case we are going to return the selected spawner okay so now we only need to one more uh, to do one more thing we actually need to spawn the object and to do that we are going to write a simple method of type void so no return type and void spawn and then we are going to write instantiate so we are going to create a new copy and what we are going to instantiate. So first of all, it wants the object original, which is going to be the game object to spawn and then comma. So back to free dot position. And now here comes this part. So what we're going to do is we're going to write select random spawner. So we are going to call this method right here and it will go through all, uh, through the code so it, that means it will select a random spawn point for us 
and then it will return this selected spawner into this position. That means that instead of select random spawner, the computer will read whatever is the like whatever this method returns. So select random spawner dot transform dot position and then we want to use the select random spawner dot transform dot rotation. Yep, of course I forgot the two brackets right here. Dot rotation and semicolon. And now the last thing we need to do is we need to wait a second. Oh, <laughs> I um, accidentally wrote a comma right there instead uh, of a point. Okay, so now the last thing we need to do is we just have to call this. So let's go to the start, uh, start and calls the spawn method. And in this case, we're just going to write spawn and semicolon, and that's it. Okay, so let's go back to the scene and set the size back to zero. Okay, now we only need the game object to spawn, so I'm quickly going to create a new 3D object, and this is a cube. So this can be any game object you want. In my case, it's just going to be a simple cube, and I'm going to call this one, I don't know, my cube or something like this and then just drag it into the assets folder to make a prefab out, a prefab out of it it's important that you have um, that you have the cube as a prefab and you're not using this cube right here so just delete it and now get to uh, go to the game manager and put in my cube and now if we play our game you can see the cube spawned over there and now if we test it again the cube spawned behind us and now test it again in this case it spawned up behind us but on the right side instead of the left and yeah so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you have any further questions just leave them in the comment sections below if you have a tutorial that you want to um, see made so if you have a tutorial request you can also leave it in the comment section below i would really appreciate it if you would like and share this uh, video and yeah so thanks for watching and as always don't forget to smile bye guys